Welcome back to another episode of PTV. I'm Aiden Howell. And I'm James Carlsar. We'll start this episode by recapping all the homecoming festivities that occurred since our last show. Yes, homecoming this year was lit. Lit, yes. That's a perfect segue to our bonfire story. To fire up the student body, the cheerleaders kick off homecoming week with the traditional bonfire. To try and get the student body and the athletes um, pumped up and ready for homecoming week. This year we had to change it up a little bit uh, due to some out of town events that were happening on Thursday. And so we thought we'd just do like a kickoff to homecoming week instead and a bunch of people said that they actually enjoyed it that way. The bonfire is a fun experience if you're not a dummy. My favorite part was when the dummies caught fire. Even though one of them didn't, it was still very exciting. I love how it brings the community and the athletes together and the atmosphere that just brings to it. For PTV, this is Clayton Chestnut. The dummies weren't the only thing on fire. That's true. Spirit Week brought the heat as well. We hope you enjoy this montage of what that week involved. I'm trying to get the shirt tucked in because it goes down to my knees. Country. Definitely doing the mustaches. Country club. Getting out of my comfort zone. Um, the residents at the manor that I work at, they wear diapers, wear bibs and stuff. We just got the binkies from like being a baby. I asked my dad if I could borrow his orange hat. His only words were, don't ruin it and don't lose it or you're dead. I have not seen the Barbie movie yet. No. Yes. Yes. Um, I like it. I think it's something new and different. It is my favorite day of Spear Week. Um, good. I always feel like science Barbie. I do feel like Barbie today. Duh. Yes, obviously. Yes. Then on Friday, the actual homecoming festivities and traditions took place. These next two segments highlight the parade and the pep rally. PHS students showed their school spirit before the homecoming game against Dallas by building these creative class floats. Every year for homecoming, each of the classes will like design and then do their own floats. This year our theme is below the railers. We've been working on it all week. We're just now putting it together. Each float had its own unique spin on taking on Ellis. Roast the railers like we're roasting them over a fire because we're, we're going to win. Wreck the railers and so we have fire on the edges and we have the train tracks and there's going to be someone inside of it. The homecoming parade kicked off with the band playing Kings and Queens and El Zorro. Next were the homecoming king and queen candidates. Rumbling on after them was the football team. The seniors started off the class floats with a bang. The juniors were ready to wrangle the railers. The sophomores showed Ellis they mean business with their theme, Wreck the Railers. And finally, the freshmen turned up the heat as they got ready to roast the railers. For PTV, this is Michael Vanderveen.
<laughs> Earlier this month, the student body showed their Panther pride by doing many different skits in celebration for homecoming. Today we are working on all of our pep rally skits and preparing for tonight's game. Many students had fun while working on their own skits. Yeah, my favorite part of this skit was signing the ball. Some traditional skits are the student body's favorite part. My favorite part is when the Pacers and the boys do their dance because it's cool to see what they come up with. The senior boys on the football team showcase their knowledge about their moms, such as their favorite place to shop at. My mom likes Tarjay. And their celebrity crush. Zach Efron. For PTV, this is Audrey Bellis. One more tradition took place before the actual homecoming game. The crowning of this year's king and queen. Here's a replay of the coronation ceremony. Friday afternoon before kickoff, we celebrated the crowning of our new king and queen. The candidates are Ryan Babcock with Jocelyn Billings, Preston Beckman with Lexi Boydston, Trace Hancha with Cadence Corman, Dayton Huguenin with Sophia Riffle, Rad Rodriguez with Olivia Soliday, Zordon Taylor with Ruthie Voss. Voted on by Phillipsburg High School's student body, the 2023 homecoming king is Rad Rodriguez. Yeah! And your 2023 homecoming queen is Cadence Corman. Being selected as king and queen remains an honor for senior candidates. I am very thankful and honored to be chosen for the opportunity and I'm very appreciative. For PTV, this is McKenna Gardner. The grand finale of the homecoming is a chance for everyone to have fun and just let loose. Here's a segment to show you on how students did just that. To finish off the homecoming week, Stuco sponsored the traditional homecoming dance with the theme Ho Down Throw Down. One PHS student took the dance theme to a whole new level. I wore the cow costume because I really like cows and it's kind of like just my personality, kind of bold I guess, I don't know. A lot of people wanted to milk me for some reason. The udders were a big hit. Whether it was dancing the night away or enjoying the snack table, those who attended the dance found ways to have fun. It was good. I like, you know, dancing. I thought it was pretty good this year. Um, a lot of more out of town people, I thought. And I just thought everybody danced and it was kind of fun. I enjoyed it. For PTV, this is Brooklyn Farber. You want a deal? Nah, I'm good. All right. Stay. Stay? Oh. You gotta flip your soap. Oh, you gotta hit. I bust. Junk on there. I'm doing the Uh, yeah. <laughs> Put it on the chocolate. <laughs> <laughs>
On a more serious note, recently a PHS teacher and former student experienced a homecoming that was of a different nature. They returned home after a life-changing and life-saving surgical procedure. Layton Johnson tells us more. Some PHS students and staff may have missed the cheerful voice that echoes throughout the halls of the school, and others may have never been able to tell that a former PHS student has faced some of the most life-altering challenges. The past six years, Jaden Minkler has suffered from renal failure, which was caused by a rare autoimmune disease in her age. When I was in eighth grade, I was sick a lot of the time, so I spent a lot of my eighth grade year in the hospital. We had taken her to the doctor for running a fever, and she continued to run a fever for almost a month on and off. And it was like the whole month of November almost. She was in the hospital multiple times that year trying to figure it out and then they sent us on to Wichita to the nephrologist. And they found out that I had an autoimmune disease that caused my body to reject my own kidneys. And so starting my freshman year, I spent a lot of time going back to the nephrologist to try and stop the rejecting of my own kidneys. And it was balanced out at a certain point for a while. And then about a little bit after my senior year, they just kind of shut off and so when I was supposed to be moving into my dorm room I wasn't able to and I had to have an emergency surgery to put my dialysis tube in and I had to do the emergency start dialysis and I've been on dialysis ever since. This whole time I've been doing dialysis and then going to my checkups just hoping that I get the call that I could get a kidney. That call eventually came thanks to the loving support from Jaden's former teacher, Deb Weizar. Um, they were talking about maybe how she might have to have a kidney transplant between her junior and senior years of high school. And she was kind of bummed about it or whatever. And I just said to her that day, oh, Jaden, don't worry. There aren't a lot of people I would give a kidney to, but I would give one to you. Mrs. Weizar has always been there for our community at times of need, and the community was there to return the favor. As the surgery grew closer, though, the one thing, and like since the surgery, um, it's kind of overwhelming how many people in town are just willing to do things for us. That kind of gets me. Um, one of my friends sent up a meal train for us, and it had like 40-some dates on it, and it was just filled like instantly. Um, so that's kind of been a thing because... I'm usually used to being the person that takes things to people or who does things to people when things happen. So that's really been something to sit back and let other people do stuff for us. That was kind of hard for me, but I've really appreciated it. It's really been something. Um, and just all the prayers, all the concerns from people ahead of time, that's really been a lot. The Meekler family agrees that the community support has been wonderful. We'll never be able to repay Deb for what she did. Yeah, it's just, she's awesome. You know, the support from the community has been amazing. With her benefit last year, that was, I was blown away. I mean, it's been, she's had a lot of support when people are pulling for her and yeah. it's been good. I mean, I said, I told Clayton it was like people were watching my Facebook posts while she was in Kansas City because I could post and like a minute later I'd have a hundred comments on it. Um, most of them had like 300 comments. People just wanted to know how she was doing and how everything, and look for updates on her and Deb both um, and make sure everything was going good. Both Jaden and Mrs. Wise are doing well with their recoveries and will resume normal activities soon. For PTV, this is Leighton Johnson. We hope that Jaden and Mrs. Weizar continue to recuperate well, and we look forward to Mrs. Weizar's returning to PHS soon. I'm sure she'll be skipping down the halls of PHS soon. Speaking of skipping, well, just watch this.
remember how to skip? Not really. Is that what this is? Oh boy, let's see here. You ain't gonna give me time to practice either, are you? I missed it. Aiden, do you know what the key to good skipping is? I don't know. A good pair of shoes. But probably not the ones that the students are making in art class. Let's take a look. Art students are kicking off a new 3D clay project using their actual kicks as inspiration. For my 3D classes, we start off with basic building techniques. We started off with pinch pots that we made spirit rattles, and then we moved on to slabs. So we're using slabs to make shoes. Quite a few kids are using their own shoes to um, make a pattern. So they're looking how the shoes put together and then making slabs in those shapes and building it from there. This project provides an opportunity for students to learn several skills. We're learning how to like combine uh, pieces of clay together and how to like look at something in real life and turn it into something out of clay. Students also learn to overcome challenges that occur during this process. Uh, the biggest challenge I have ran into is the details. That's where I'm at right now. They're just hard to like to get exact looking from the shoe to the clay. Oh, a few people are a little frustrated on trying to figure out, well, how do they get into those small spaces like in the toe of the shoe? But other than that, it's going good. I really enjoy the project. It's just, it's something outside of my comfort zone. So, yeah. For PTV, this is Caden's Conrad. You want me to do it first? Yeah, that's fine. What do you want to do? I'll stay. I'll hit. Yeah. <laughs> okay, calm down. You ready? <laughs> so first one's down, right? Yeah. First one. No, I'm up. You're down. No, I'm up. And you're down. Or up. Yeah. I'll hit. I'll say. I'll hit. Oh, you've got to be kidding. <laughs> You gotta get the other side of your face. No, no you don't. Right? <laughs> there. No! <laughs> Is it me again? No, I do. You do? Yeah, you just know. Did I? Yeah. I'll hit. You've got <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I thought you went over. Me too. Uh oh. Four. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Kinda over you right now. looks messy. You know what else was a bit messy? What's that? The day the PTV staff competed at the state fair. It rained all day. Now that was a mess. As you'll see in this next story, PTV students weren't the only ones from PHS at the fair. Take a look. PHS got verified at Kansas State Fair 2023. Five of our very own PTV students competed in the Scholastic Press Association video competition. Uh, my story at the state fair was about the fried food vendors there at the state fair. Each team created a story about an attraction at the fair, then combined them to make a mini-episode. Um, I feel overall my performance was pretty good. I think I got some pretty good shots. I had some technical difficulties on uh, human error there. Um, so I had to kind of make my story work without any sound. I messed up on the camera, so it was kind of 
harder to get that story made. PTV staffers weren't the only PHS students competing this year. Local 4-H participants also competed with art projects and furry friends. At the state fair this year, I took my craft, which was actually a model of Bo that I painted. I took foods. I took my shirt that I made and I took dogs. I think we did really well. I think Bo was certainly having a good time and Nico was on his A game. Members of FFA also participated in the fair with displays and livestock showings. So I took around a dozen kids to the state fair, so we actually go up twice. And so split between that, that was about a dozen kids. Um, we went and competed in our county collective exhibit, which is basically where you collect agriculture around the county. Um, so crops, vegetables, anything grown in Phillips County. And we make an educational exhibit about that so people can walk through and see what Phillips County grows. I think we did well this year. Um, there's definitely some room for improvement as far as making a booth that looks good um, and showcases Phillips County. We did a good job of that. I think we just need a few more uh, exhibits to have in there. For PTV, this is Christina Futh. Our PHS band also competed at the State Fair and they received a one rating on their arena performance. Congratulations to Miss Still and her band members for representing our community well. Speaking of our community, our next few stories highlight some events that go beyond the walls of PHS. We'll start by taking a look at how the Phillips County Farmers Market is continuing to grow. An idea to bring farmers, crafters, and vendors together continues to be a big hit each month as people gather at the Phillipsburg Farmers Market. What well, was actually kind of an idea of, you know, we had several people that did different things with agriculture, whether it be crafts, whether it be agriculture and beef, whether it be gardening. We just saw a need of a lot of people who had a lot of products and um, we knew that we didn't have anything like it. Uh, and then honestly, it just kind of grew from there. Then we got excited about, you know, creating a community event to bring everybody together. And so there came the food trucks and then we came the music. And so it really did turn into kind of bringing the town together monthly to enjoy each other, have good conversation and fellowship and then really highlight kind of the businesses that don't have the storefronts and can provide good services. So. For young entrepreneurs, the farmer's market provides an opportunity to get the word out about their products and grow their businesses. So I own Rockin' KC Designs. I make car freshies, um, western jewelry, I do beaded pins and like beaded keychains. So I wanted a way to get my business name out here. I've been doing this for three years, but there's still a lot of people that don't know about what I do. Um, and most of the time when I travel to vendor events, I'm having to go quite a ways away. So it's nice to have something to do in town and not have to travel far to set up and sell my stuff I make. The farmer's market continues to grow as vendors show interest. Oh, we've been completely overwhelmed and with the outpouring. It's been incredible. So, so just as an example, you know, last year about this time we had 20-some vendors and now we have 40-some. Um, so it's even growing tremendously even year to year. Uh, we have repeat vendors. We have so many people attending. Not only do the local businesses benefit from the farmer's market, but community members really appreciate opportunity to shop and gather as well. Lots of people put in lots of work um, to their, into their stands and stuff, and I think they're really passionate about it, and it good, brings good money to our community. Yeah, I think it's been a really good thing for our community. It's getting everybody out here. We've been really busy so far. I think this is, what, the fourth one of the season, and every time it's been really busy, so I think it's been good at getting everybody together and able to come out. For PTV, this is Marissa Armit. Get off your phone. See me after school, please. Sorry, Mrs. Chekhov. I had to take so long to bring you food for lunch. Huh. Well, back in my day. I forgot my lunch. Do you have any food I can borrow? No, all I have is bread and an apple. 
poor Miss Truckout must have had a really bad. Only getting crumbs for lunch and not being able to call her parents to bring Subway. Times were tough in the olden days. Just visit the Fort Bissell Museum and you'll see what the olden days were really like. That's just what Austin Leanna did to give you this look at the night at the museum event. To bring history alive and create additional interest in the museum, Fort Bissell hosted its annual night at the museum. So congratulations. <laughs> Well, tonight has had a big turnout. We are very happy for the turnout that came for our special person that was honored on, that we do every year. Um, Judy Rowland was our special person, having been the city treasurer for so many years, or the county treasurer for so many years. And um, we have had people mingle. We, she's told us her history. Uh, people are walking around. They're eating pie. They're eating ice cream. They're doing a scavenger hunt. Um, it's just a fun evening. The weather is great. Um, we just want to thank everybody that's come on board and come and enjoyed it. Night at the Museum was a celebration of Fort Bissell, where the staff talked about its history and served sweet treats to attendees. Um, we will we invite everybody to try and join up and become members and friends of the fort. And that was also the second part of our evening, that, what we're hosting, to get more members on board. And we want to thank everyone that came out. For PTV, this is Austin Leanna. <laughs> what are you oh, laughing at? My friend sent me a funny TikTok in the group chat. Group chat? You and your friends got it so easy. Back in my day. <laughs> Well, I best be getting home. Ma wants me home before dark. Well, you must write me a letter. Okay, I'll send my carrier pigeon to come through see the tonight. Okay, hopefully yours can carry five pages, unlike mine. Hey, Aiden, what kind of wheels do you drive? Um, does the skateboard count? Well, I suppose so, because recently an all wheels cruise night and car show was held in Phillipsburg. And I guess skateboards do have wheels. Sorry, I'm not going to cruise on a skateboard. That's way too much work. But let's take a look at how well the car show went. Phillips County Rod and Custom held a cruise night and a car show for people to show off their cool cars. Well, it was the Phillips County Rod and Custom and originally it was the Piston Pushers Car Club. But then we changed it to Phillips County in order to incorporate anybody in the county that wanted to join. This is, this, this is what it's all about. All types of wheels, including motorcycles, tractors, and big rigs, were displayed at the show by owners of all ages, including PHS sophomore Rallon Minkler. I brought two pickups, a 1969 Chevy and an 88 Chevy. I've been going to car shows for like a year. This is my second one. This event also gave business owners a chance to network with car enthusiasts. We've been in business, uh, Blueprint Engines is the name of the company. We've been in business for 40 years, um, a little bit over 40 years. Uh, we build nothing but um, high performance street engines for cars like this. The car show was well attended and was a big success. Being a first year um, kind of for this and knowing that they're going to plan on doing this for uh, the upcoming years, uh, this is a really great start. For PTV, this is Garrett Johnson. watching Netflix. You know, back in my day. <sighs> I'm so tired of watching the birds every day. Maybe I'll reread one of these books. Sister, would you like to come play kickball with us? Our neighbor's got a new ball and it's only three and a half miles away. Wonderful. I honestly didn't want to read Dickens again for the eighth time this week. Now it's time for our PTV sports update with Nathan and Cadence. <laughs> Hey Panther fans, it's time for a PTV Sports Update. I'm Nathan Fisher. And I'm Cadence Gertie. Our tennis team continues to be one of the toughest teams in our area as our players prepare to head into regionals. 
At a recent home competition, the Lady Panthers showed why they're a team to be reckoned with, as we'll see in the report from Dalton McGrath. The Lady Panther tennis team continued their success this season by hosting a round robin with four other teams. We had a really good tournament yesterday. Um, we were undefeated going into the final round with Ellsworth, and they were undefeated. And I kind of envisioned that might be what happened. So um, came down to some really big matches in the final round. Uh, unfortunately, Ellsworth took uh, three out of the four matches to take the team title. But um, I was proud of our girls that we hadn't seen Scott City yet this year. And I have seen that they have some good records online, so I was a little worried. but we. Took Scott City four wins to zero, so I was very proud of that. And I think everybody placed first or second overall, so it was a good day. Rose Javis was impressed with the final number one singles. Hey, one of our standout matches was the finals for number one singles, and Olivia Soliday uh, beat a very good player from uh, Ellsworth to win the finals and get first place. And she had also won, uh, beat a state qualifier earlier in the day so she went 4-0 uh, for first place and beat two very fine players yesterday. The girls were pleased about how they played. It went pretty good. I didn't play the best that I could have played but still ended up winning it so it was a good win. Um, we went 7-1 so we did pretty good. The team works hard to improve themselves and working towards their goals. This year, just to do good at regionals, hopefully make it to state. Um, but I just want to keep winning some good games throughout the season and just keep progressing and getting better. Probably qualifying for state again and hopefully placing. For PTV, this is Don McGrath. Our tennis team will host the MLC tournament tomorrow, and on the following Saturday, they will also host regionals. Come on out to the tennis courts to watch some good tennis. A volleyball team picked up another win this week by beating Russell in three sets on their home court. In the previous week, the Lady Panthers also added a W to the win column at home, as you see in this recap. Take a look! Last week, the Phillipsburg Lady Panthers hosted Ellis and Hill City in a volleyball triangular. After splitting the first two sets against Ellis, Phillipsburg headed to the third set and fought hard as senior Cadence Corman scored with this kill from the right side. Later in the set, Bren Billings also kept the hope alive as she scored from the middle with this shot. Then, Sophia Riffle gives the Panthers the lead with this kill. Freshman Riley Seams also gets in on the action as she keeps the score close with this outside kill. However, it wouldn't be enough as the Lady Panthers lost the third set 20-25. to Looking to rebound from that loss, Phillipsburg then faced off against Hill City, and Teja Calhoun gets the Panthers going with his downline kill. Freshman Camry Chestnut gets a kill from the middle to add to Phillipsburg's lead. <laughs> Phillipsburg takes care of business and defeats Hill City in two straight sets. Assistant coach Danny Suchlin sees how the team is showing progress. I think the girls have really started to uh, find their flow and what works together. I am hoping that the girls can uh, up their hitting percentages and gain some more confidence and that will help lead to some more wins and upsetting some people as the season goes on. For PTV, this is Cadence Grody. Our volleyball team will head to Scott City tomorrow for a tournament. Good luck to our Lady Panthers! As you saw earlier in this episode, Phillipsburg recently had homecoming. And that was a big night for our football team as the Panthers knocked the Railers off their tracks. Take a look at some of the highlights from that game. As the Panthers took the field for this year's homecoming game, they were ready to face the Ellis Railers. The Panthers got ready to receive the kickoff as Ellis chose to do an onside kick. On the first drive of the game, Rod Rodriguez ran into the end zone scoring one of many touchdowns making the score 8-0. Trace Hansard then threw a 66 yard pass to Tanner Hellenic, which led to a touchdown, which put the score to 22 to 0. On this quarterback keeper, Trace kept running and running all the way to the end zone for the fourth Panther touchdown. With 14 seconds left in the first quarter, Panthers led Ellis 29 to 12. 
The successful onside kick led to an opportunity for the Panthers to score again. Hentry fakes a handoff to Rodriguez, and the line helped create an open path for Hentry to go all the way for another touchdown, which led the score 51 to 12. On this long kickoff return by Ryan Babcock, it helped lead to another touchdown for the Panthers. This one from Seth Keaton put the score to 57 to 18 going into halftime. When the first half ended, the Panthers headed into the locker rooms and was ready to take on Ellis in the second half. As the homecoming game drew to an end, Colin Springer scored the final touchdown of the night, leading the Panthers to end 65 to 32. As the homecoming game wrapped up, the players thought everyone played well. It's cool that Rad got homecoming king and he came out and had a really big night. I think tonight's game went really well. We played really well as a team and we really dispersed the ball well and spread out and we just ran all over them really tonight. Uh, big play, I mean really everything was working offensively for us. Um, threw the ball a little bit, got a lot of people touches. Um, so again, about everything was working offensively. Uh, I thought the game went really well. Um, super long game, a lot of penalties, so it was kind of not a very clean game, but overall went really well. We scored a lot of points, and uh, a lot of kids got some playing time. For PTV, this is Adam Mascarenas. Our football team will host Beloit tonight at Panther Stadium in hopes of picking up a district win. Good luck. Our cross-country team might be small this year, but it's mighty. At the Smith Center meet, Colin Ewing was the top Panther placer as he finished 14th place with a time of 20 minutes and 22 seconds. I think the average person sometimes doesn't understand what a cross-country runner really has to go through. So we created this fun segment to give you an inside glimpse. Take a look. Oh my gosh, what time is it? 5.30? I have to get up and get running. The hardships? of cross country. Negative five degrees? That is like the perfect running temperature. Freezing temps. Man, even though it's really cold outside, I'm, I'm getting frostbit. This gives me so much more pleasure. Hurricane wins. It's a bit windy out here. Blazing heat. <sighs> Five more miles, five more. Indoor training, running, not lifting. Mama ain't raised no limp. <laughs> Yes, she did. <sighs> what a great day of misery. Can't wait for another day. That's all the time we have for sports. Good luck to our sports teams as we continue through the fall season. I'm Nathan Fisher. And I'm Kaden Scurdy. Go, Go Panthers. Panthers! Before we end today's show, we have one more Flapjack face-off to show you. Okay, I'll go first, I'll go first. Mm, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, ooh, that's two. Okay. I want to hit 14. Are you going to hit or not? I want to hit. Okay. You. <laughs> you 
went over. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> oh. I know that's on there. <laughs> <laughs> no mercy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing the Okay, ready? Hit. Hold on, my math skills aren't mathing. 18. I'll stay. So. 17. <laughs> Oh, my poor sweatshirt. Okay. <laughs> Jeez. Oh. Okay. I got it on myself. That's okay. You ready? <laughs> you poor honor band sweatshirt. No, it's fine. It's supposed to be ruined. No, it's fine. Now that one's up. And now yours is up. Ugh. Oh, okay. 20? Okay, I'm staying. Ain't no way I'm going again. What is this? 18, you got to stay. I win! Oh, I win! <laughs> oh, you're getting it all. When it gets the eyeball, you know you're good. Oh, no. All right. It tastes really good, by the way. <laughs> Are you gonna smear it around? Oh, well, maybe. <laughs> now that you stopped that, I thought it will. <laughs> oh, 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 that comes out really quick. Okay. Not the white shoes. Yeah, why'd you wear white shoes, dumb? <laughs> <laughs> Yummy. <laughs> That's how you play flapjack. <laughs> I cannot even see! That wraps up this episode of PTV. I'm James Krausar. And I'm Maiden Howell. Stay classy, Phillipsburg High. <laughs>